Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Yasudian, one of the dermatologists in the UK. Today I thought I will share with you an important topic, the relationship between stress and the skin. Many of us are asked by our patients if stress causes their skin condition. In the early part of my career, I was fairly dismissive of the association between stress and the skin. But in the last 10 to 15 years, I've come to realize that there is a very close relationship between our brain and the skin. Firstly, we need to define what stress is. It needs to be differentiated from pressure or strain. Stress is when events exceeds an individual's capability to cope. Pressure or strain, on the other hand, is something we can cope with. Stress can be acute when it lasts just minutes to hours, or it can be chronic, which means it lasts several hours a day, weeks, or even months. And this can be different depending on the perception of that patient. So what are we going to cover in this video? Firstly, how does stress affect skin conditions? Secondly, what is the mechanism by which stress affects our skin? Thirdly, the conditions that can be affected and finally, what can we do to alleviate these effects? The information from this talk comes from various sources. Most of it is from peer-reviewed dermatological articles, but there are some bits from various books that I've read on neuroscience, which in fact I'm reading much more than medicine now. My favorite topic is psychology, and there is so much we can learn from it. It also gives us a lot of information on how we can treat our patients much more effectively. It's important to note that skin conditions can cause stress to the person with the condition. However, what we are looking at now is psychological stress, which can in turn affect various skin conditions. There was an excellent commentary on this topic in this month's British Journal of Dermatology. The authors feel that there are three main ways by which stress affects the skin. Firstly, stress can trigger the worsening of a pre-existing chronic skin disease. Research from prospective studies have shown a worsening of chronic skin diseases such as psoriasis or eczema, and this is usually preceded by a phase of more stress, and that induces maladaptive behavior, such as a higher scratching response. Secondly, stress can trigger the onset of skin diseases. Examples are many retrospective reports of patients with chronic skin diseases that report life events or other stresses in the period just before the onset, the first onset of the condition. Finally, stress can be a causal factor for the disease. There are many psychiatric diagnoses of factitial disorders, for example, dermatitis artifacta, or compulsive disorders, example, trichotillomania, which don't have a specific dermatological cause. This last group, thankfully, is quite rare in dermatological clinics as it can be really very difficult to treat. There are central and peripheral based mechanisms at the level of the skin by which stress can affect skin conditions. In the central mechanisms, there are two main pathways. One is right in the middle of the brain, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And the next is in the brain stem, called the locus ceruleus norepinephrine sympathetic adrenomedullary system. Both are activated by higher brain centers in response to psychological stress. A positive feedback loop exists between the two pathways with negative feedback at various levels to prevent overstimulation. At the level of the skin, there are several chemicals released from cutaneous nerve endings in response to stress. The most important include peripheral corticotrophin releasing hormone, nerve growth factor, and substance Bs. Now these all exert pro-inflammatory effects on in part through activation of mast cells, which reside in close proximity to dermal sensory nerves and play a pivotal role in the cutaneous response to stress. The cumulative response to stress causes significant changes to the skin, including an altered immune system, impaired wound healing, decreased barrier function, 
and a reduction in resistance to infection. These in turn worse, worsen existing dermatoses. So which skin condition is affected by stress? Almost any inflammatory condition can be worsened by stress. The commonest are psoriasis, eczema and acne. Other disorders like urticaria, rosacea, hyperhidrosis and lichen planus can also be affected by stress. In fact, I would say almost any condition can be affected by stress. Finally, let's go on to the management. What can we do to reduce the psychological factors affecting the skin? There are two main ways. One, action oriented or two, emotion regulation. Action orientation is real world problem solving. For example, if we feel that the stress is due to a specific job or a relationship with a specific person, try and resolve it. That would be the best way of addressing the condition. Emotional regulation is much more difficult and we need to have some insight about it ourselves. So how do we regulate our emotions? There are four main strategies. First, avoidance. This involves steering clear of all the situations that provoke the sensation of fear, anger or sadness. Next is distraction, trying to replace the emotion by doing other stuff that takes over our mind. For example, going to the gym when we are angry to try and take our mind off that stress. Thirdly, we can try to suppress unwanted emotions. This is probably the least successful strategy and it is likely that the unpleasant thought or emotion will just keep recurring at the wrong moment. The last and possibly the most pragmatic way of dealing with emotions is reappraisal. This involves accepting our emotional frailty and trying to understand the way our brain works. In effect, it's a type of metacognition, which is an awareness and understanding of one's own thought process. The more we think about how we think, the better we become. What are the practical ways by which we can regulate our emotions in daily practice? There are two main techniques, cognitive behavioral therapy and mindfulness. These are, there are numerous books available on both topics. I feel that the desire to do this, however, should come from within. If we don't want to do it, then our emotions are not going to be regulated. So unless we want to explore our emotions ourselves, we are going to fail. For those who feel they cannot read books, there are others who can teach you these techniques if you feel overawed by it. In my opinion, this would be invaluable in the management of a stress-induced skin condition. So what did I learn and what would I recommend? Firstly, there's very good evidence of the relationship between the brain and the skin. If our mind is anxious, our skin is likely to be unstable as well. It is important to note that in most instances, stress does not cause the condition. It just precipitates it or perpetuates it or aggravates it. Secondly, managing our emotions is almost as important as treating the skin problem. The desire, however, has to come from within. The person who has the skin condition should be made aware that calming the mind plays a vital part in controlling the skin problem. I hope you found this information helpful. Thank you for listening and bye.